everybody, this is Christian. Um, I come to you with a uh, commission I just finished up a few days ago. I finally found time to do a video for it. Um, I've just been, you know, busy with work and, and such. But uh, this is a uh, Saber Forge Disciple, and it is for Thomas. Forgive me, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. It's very Italian. <laughs> um... But he's been he's been waiting a, f uh, a, a few weeks. Um, I'd probably say a, a couple months for this saber, and it's finally it's finally finished. Um, and I know he's excited for it, so I won't keep him waiting any longer. Um, but anyway, so here we go. What I did, it came to me. Um, saber Forge's, you know, matte finish, and it was it was obviously a very old saber. It was very used. Hey, I could tell he dueled with it a lot. Um, he asked me to polish it up a little bit. There were a lot of deep uh, scratches on the emitter. I managed to get most, if not, well, not all of them, but most of them out. And now they're very, very, and the ones that are still there are very, very hard to see. Um, so it looks good. Uh, inside we've got a uh, tri -Cree Royal Blue, uh, Red, ro sorry, Red Royal Blue, sorry, I can't talk today. <laughs> Uh, red, green, royal, blue. There we go. Um, it's, uh, it's running a Prism V4. It's one of the, the last Prism V4s I'm hoping to do since the Prism V5 will be coming out here soon. I'm really excited for that. Uh, but yeah, we've got a, uh, two watt bass speaker from the Custom Saber Shop. Originally, I put the recharge port in the pommel. And I did that with a couple other sabers too. And what I realized is that the the wires from the charge port, um, you can keep them away from the speaker as much as you want, but they they distort the face of the speaker and they make it they it's supposed to be this perfect concave bowl on the face of the bass speaker. And the wires, I think it's just the vibration of the speaker, but the wires cause it to flatten a bit, and you lose a lot of bass. I found that that you know over over time the saber gets much quieter. I found that with my my Star Killer um, that I'll be doing a review of coming up here soon. The new Saber Forge Renegade, uh, this one right here that I just that I just finished up. You can see I had the recharge port here and the pommel. Um, let me see if I can focus up here. Yeah, recharge port right there in the pommel. There's that's actually a 3D printed. Um, port holder and I did the same thing for uh for the disciple here but I found that at it damaged the speaker so what I did I put it I I did an internal recharge port partially because it's also nice to not have to drill any more holes than you need in the hilt and uh it's just it's nice not seeing an external recharge port I know it's a little bit more finicky cuz to charge it you have to take the pommel out and slide the chassis out, um, but it, it shouldn't be an issue. Speaking of the chassis, um, I'll show that to you guys quick here. So you just unscrew the pommel, ready standard. Um, you'll probably have to tap on it a little bit to get it to start to come out. And then there is your board. Your SD, ca SD card access is right there at the front, and then your charge port is right here. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pull the kill key. So the Thomas had some very uh, special requests for fonts. Um, he wanted the the first one here. He wanted was Cyber Assassin by Shamim. And that one's set to red right now. These are my custom uh, color profiles. This one's actually said to more of a Vader red with a little bit of the blue in there. Um, people don't believe that that when you have the uh, profile set, that having like your blue or your green set to like five, like the, just five, and then your red would be at a thousand. People don't think that that could affect the color very much, but it does. It uh, the having the blue set between like five and ten 
on a prism will add, it'll take out some of the orangeness in the red and add a little bit of magenta and it's a really really beautiful red um, it makes it look a little bit deep red on camera but it is a gorgeous like it, it's, it's it's like between red and deep red it's a nice medium red and it's becoming one of my favorites so I've got that on like all of my prism savers right now I love the uh, um, power off for cyber assassin Yeah, you can see a little bit of the blue there. You'll see the colors better when I put the blade in. This next one is Vader R1 by Lord Blaco. Same red, I think, for that one. This is Ghosts of the Grey. I have never um, experienced this font in person before. I've only heard it in videos. And it is phenomenal. I might have to put it on some of my sabers. That is yellow. The hum on this one is very strong. The, uh, the swings are a little bit more subdued, subdued, but it works. It all works really well. The next one... Mm, I can't remember which font this is. Oh, it's Carillion! Ah, that's right, Carillion. Which is, that one is also a first for me, um, by Mad Cow. He makes some really, really interesting, really neat fonts. Um, I have a lot of his, uh, or I have a good few of his fonts on some of my sabers, and they're just phenomenal. Um, so we'll go to the next one. This one is Link, and I can't remember the maker, I apologize, but it's a very interesting font. I've never been a huge Zelda fan, personally. But um, as far as saber fonts go, this one's very interesting. And of course, I had to have green for that one. <laughs> nice, neat little power off there, just a snick. And the next one. Forgive me. I feel it again. The call to the light. This is Shamim's uh, Force Awakens Kylo font. And I've got to say, uh, this is the first time I've, I've used this font, um, or heard this font in person at least. And oh my god, it is my favorite. It is currently my favorite Kylo font. Um, I really like Unhinged, and I really like Lord Blaco's uh, TFA font, but Shamim's uh, Kylo font is just insane. It's from what I understand, it sounds like he put he inlaid some of the Force sound effects from TFA into the hum, and so it creates this really eerie, like unsettling sound during the hum, and it is phenomenal, and I love it, and it's my like my new all time favorite lightsaber font as of right now. So uh, that one's standard red, I think just red by itself. So 
good. He puts a purple flash on Flash. And the power off is just, ugh, oh, it's great. So I'm going to go ahead and put a blade in now. This is one of my new um, dual diffused clear uh, blades from uh, the custom saber shop that I made a while back. I, I saw, the first time I saw a, a dual, uh, clear dual diffused blade in person was actually at the uh, uh, TSL tournament in March. Um, Vader's Vault was there and Alan and Deanna, they had some, some of their blades. And I totally neglected to ask if they were selling any because I totally would have bought some. Um, but they're, they're, it won't show up well on camera, but the dual diffused clear blades have this really cool uh, line texture along here. Um, and it's, it's so much better, in my opinion, than just like a standard like clear or trans white blade. It adds, it adds an energy effect to the blade. It won't show up on camera, but it's... Uh, it's pretty neat. So I think from now on, most most if not all of my blades I make will uh, be clear dual diffused blades. All right. So again, this is um, Shamim's Kylo font. shut off my overhead light. It's very harsh. There we go. That's better. The camera's actually doing a decent job at picking up the the uh, the, the texture of the blade. Um, it is bright and evenly lit, but I think I've got my camera uh, my my ISO setting is like really low. That was my bad. Um, let's see if we can bump that up. That's a bit better. But um, I'll turn it down just so you can see that texture. There we go. And you can kind of see some of the lines along here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've got uh, the the flicker set really really high on this one. You know, because it's an unstable Kylo font. Uh, it's focusing up here. There we go. Switch to the next font. Cyber Assassin. Cyber Assassin. This one's red too. I think I switched it for some reason. Oh no, this is uh, this is that Vader red. Vader R1, again, uh, Vader Red, very lime green yellow flash on flash, shows up white on camera. Ghosts of the Grey, this one's yellow, yellow never shows up well on camera unfortunately. Um, but yellow, for some reason, looks really, really cool with this hilt. Purple. Oh, yeah. Nice purple. With a uh, light blue flash on flash. I've got all the uh, lockup settings set to 1. So, during the flash on flash, I think, it's, I think that's uh, the... Um, the power level indicator settings, but it it's it's almost strobey. It, it's like it's 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 almost seizure inducing when you some of them some of the colors when you have them uh, flashing. And link. 
nice green. I think this is standard green. I prefer a little bit of um, uh, red in my green to make it more of a lime green, but I think that was just standard green. It's a, a custom boot I made for the uh, Kylo font. I'll go to a less uh, go to a less unstable font to show you off to show off the colors. Cyber assassin. That's better. I think the battery is getting low. So to uh, switch your colors, Thomas, you want to, uh, when you activate the saber, this is your activation switch and this is your auxiliary switch. Um, you turn your saber on and then switch the color, you press them both at the same time. Uh, it's orange, still looks a bit red on camera. There's yellow, green, cyan. Is a, a medium blue. It's a royal blue with a, a a little bit of green mixed in. This is closer to just royal blue. There's um, indigo or violet. Either one. There's purple. It's more of a magenta. It's got a lot of red in there. And back to red. So yeah, um, Thomas, I hope you enjoy. I'll be uh, sending out, uh, sending it out to you here shortly. Um, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was it was it was uh, quite a bit of fun doing this install. It was my first time working with uh, Jedi Jordan's um, chassis. He's a uh, he's a uh, uh, a, a good buddy of mine, so he sent me a bunch of his chassis just to kind of test out and, and get a feel for. And um, I had to make a little bit of modification because the the length um, of the uh, some of the apprentice hilts, you know, they're a bit smaller. So I had, to, I had to shorten it a little bit, but it turned out really well, and I'm really happy with it. So, uh, Thomas, I hope you enjoy. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and may the Force be with you.